Hey there, I'm Danny, the 3D Printing DM, and welcome to 3D Printing Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. This video today is brought to you by the Lost Adventures Company, and yes, that's our company. Get some early access models and content from our next Kickstarter here at lostventures.co slash coming dash soon. Today we're going to do another Hidden Gems episode where we search for the best 3D printable Patreon creators that might not be as well known. There are only two rules. The Patreon has to have 500 or less patrons and they have to be making tabletop related 3D printable content. Now to make this fan random, we're using stltop.com, sorting by lowest to highest and using these two dice to determine which Patreon we look at. So let's get started. So this is our D10. So this is gonna determine what page and this is gonna determine which number. So number one. So we're gonna go to page four, number one. So the first one is gonna be Nova Minis. There's a lot here. I, I really like that they kind of outline all the things that they offer. I think that's really important, especially for somebody who's trying to stand out among all the different options. Here's the good stuff. The June 2021 release. Savage Lycanthropes. Okay, so we're talking about werewolves and the like here. These kind of remind me of like, the older D&D orcs with like the snouts, the Zelda moblins. And it's cool. I think that's an interesting take on this. Looks like that's a werebore. Not, a, not an orc. Sorry. <laughs> that's, my, that's my bad. Um, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. I like the chains. I see this immediately and I start thinking of like uh, adventures where I have like a werewolf man that's been chained up and he escapes out of prison. And that's cool. That's like nice, simple, traditional D&D &D and immediately gets me going, okay? Let me just keep flipping through a little bit here to just see the terrain. So here's the scenery, we've got the outhouse. So I'm, I'm picturing the uh, Jurassic Park scene with the outhouse, you know? <laughs> and this is a nice little house. I really like the detail. That kind of detail might look overdone in a render, but it prints really, really well. I think this is a good option for uh, more traditional D&D players probably, rather than war gamers. Although I think it would work well in like a Frostgrave Warband, okay? Let's see our next one. Oops. All right, so it looks like six is our page and eight is gonna be our numbers. Six, seven, eight, creature armory. Okay, we got a welcome pack, which is pretty standard these days. I like that they also show the test printed pre supported models. That's cool, this is a cool style. I don't think we see it too much in terms of the kind of grotesqueness. Almost looks like it might be good Nurgle proxies. This guy looks great. More realistic proportions, which is definitely a thing for a lot of people. Okay, so not safe for work stuff going on. I'll make sure to preview that for the children in my, in my channel. I like this type of realistic render style. I think it really helps kind of imagine the renders in real life printed. I think this is also a really cool model in terms of the different animals and like the Aztec kind of inspired theme. I could see these being some type of war band, especially for like D&D, &D, but also for something, again, more like a, a mini agnostic game. So super cool. I really like these a lot. The detail's great. It looks like they'll print and it looks like they'll be really nice and paintable. One thing that's nice about this is that they've got 32 and 75 millimeter scale. So for the people that like to paint um, at the bigger scale, people who are like more bust, bust painters, I think this is really nice. I like this uh, little Hanzo collectible. Now this is my style. I like this chibi stuff a lot, but that's cause I'm a, I'm a low key weeb, you know, for the people that know. I think this is really unique. Um, a definitely different style and take from a lot of the um, other like monster focused patrons and I really like that there's so much variety in this month's offerings. Definitely, if this is your thing, definitely pretty cool. I think it's worth checking out. Let's go to our next option. Here we go. All right, so seven is our page and four is also our number. One, two, three, four. Aether Studios. Oh man, I know Aether. So Aether, um, we've worked together quite a bit in the past and the team who runs it are super nice people. And I divulge that so that you guys know there is gonna be some bias on my part. I'll do my best to give them as fair a balanced commentary as possible. One thing I notice is that the pledge levels are, are a little bit lower than normal. And 
they're doing almost exclusively terrain from my understanding. The difference between the $6 and 12 level is that there's also like an additional set that comes. So it looks like Will's Choice. And they give a whole bunch of other sets in addition to this. I love this little intro thing. And right off the bat, you'll notice that there's a lot of tiles. And this is one of those things that Aether does really well. They actually were the ones that designed our lava tiles for Lost Dragons Kickstarter, which is, you know, tiles aren't normally what we do, but I had them do it because they were so good at it. I really think this is clever, different. <laughs> the Oaken Muffin, it's cute. It's got personality. Caves, this is just really nice generic scatter that I think would go well in a lot of places. And it looks like Eastern Kingdoms is something that they're gonna be focusing on or they are focusing on right now which is also something that Aether's done really well. They're very good at doing like themed sets and kind of giving you as many options as possible for it. And I know that supportless is a very big thing of theirs. I'm not sure if that's still something that they're focusing on these days, but definitely pretty nice. These, if you are into tiles, this is an amazing option for you. And I know that they use Dragon Lock, but you can get Dragon Lock stuff for free and there's plenty of cross compatibility with Open Lock if that's your thing. Okay, let's check out the next one. We got four for the page and we've got three. All right, one, two, and three. Colossal Miniatures. Pretty normal tiers, right? It looks like they have an early adopter tier two for $9 a month, which is pretty nice. This is a really common story that somebody comes from like animation or the VFX industry and decides, man, I like minis, I like D&D, I like wargaming, I wanna do this. So it looks like that's what happened here. Look at this, modern day survivors. So this is an area that is kind of neglected for the people that run like more modern RPGs, more modern uh, war games, you know, things like this is not a test, right? Like the Fallout inspired games. I think these are really cool. Also I have a little like ode to Freddy Krueger. Um, I really like this approach. I like that they're showing painted models. I think that does a lot. And if you're, if you're a Patreon creator and you have people who are constantly painting up their stuff, I think it's nice to be able to give that type of preview. It does a lot. They have some like cultists at the bottom, right? Those are cool. A little bit different. I really like kind of the masks, the different items that they have. They just look nice and cohesive and more modern survivors. So it looks like modern survivors are kind of a running theme of theirs. So if this kind of futuristic kind of post-apocalyptic or even modern type of setting, something you're interested in, I think they'd be a good choice, something to consider. Let's try our next one. Here we go. All right, so page seven. Wow, wow. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Goon Master Games. I like this, this is, this is cute, you guys. This little, these little sketches, I, I've got like major flavor vibes. I like this sort of thing a lot. And it's something that I really liked about Cobra Mode, which was in the last uh, Hidden Gems episode. I, I know I've talked about this before, how important it is to kind of have everything up front to be visible. And I think that's really the case here. Man, I love these. These owls, definitely like a more stylized look which I, I do love. I am admittedly a little more biased towards this. Um, the trees, the house, I mean, look at my last Kickstarter, of course, I love this sort of thing. And I think it just makes sense for these kind of owl folk. I love the like pigeon mounts that they have. I think that's super creative. Um, the, the like, the possum mount. I think for certain campaigns that just kind of love going in a more unique flavor, these, these are gonna be great. And there's something consistent with all of these, which is, a really kind of consistent unifying style. And if you're into this style, uh, if several months in a row it's consistent, I think that's gonna be a good, it's gonna be interesting, good for you. Which is something that not all Patreons have, if I can be honest. This is like a Cthulhu vibe. And again, that same kind of stylized. I really like the kind of artistic changes that they made to some of these monsters. Like this, not an intellect devourer, has this is almost like a spider. I think that's an interesting take. Um, a lot of these Cthulhu monsters are definitely inspired by Mind Flayers, but pretty nice overall. And then again, this, this welcome pack just has a lot of these more really nice generic monsters that I think will go well with any type of like Arctic setting. Let's look at our next one. Okay. 
All right, so we got seven and we got two. So again, we're on page seven. So coming in number two, one, two. Rober Rollin. When I look at these, again, like VFX artist vibe, just looking at these kind of monthly releases, they also have a slightly lower than usual monthly monthly rate, like that $5 per month rate. Um, the $10 also have access to all of the model, models that they've shared, which is pretty unique, right? For people to offer that, it's really generous. He loves to sculpt bust miniatures or cartoon figures. So this is one of those Patreons for the folks that like the fan art of a lot of popular things. I, I don't have access to see them, but you know, Frog Lady from Mandalorian, Beaker from Muppets. And I'd assume for those of you who do tabletop printing, um, you'd be able to use some of these, but it's not exactly tabletop related. So I'm not gonna spend too much time, but I did wanna highlight this in case those of you who are interested in this sort of thing are interested in printing some of these yourself. So let's keep going. Seven again. <laughs> Actually, no, this is five. The page is five. So it's five, page five, and we're gonna go to option, Patreon number seven. One, two, three, four, and then five. Bombshell Miniatures. So Bombshell Miniatures has a flat $10 per month membership level. Based on the picture, they've got like a more like Pulp Fiction. I don't know if that's the right term. They definitely have some regular fantasy stuff here like Arcane Forge. But definitely a lot of other stuff too that's geared towards like a more, it looks like a more um, modern, realistic kind of approach. I, I like when people have like pictures of themselves because you see them in the community all the time making comments and stuff and you kind of put a picture to the Patreon. These are super like comic hero, like Marvel kind of superheroes. I don't know if these are actually comic book heroes or if they're just inspired. Like Wavefront reminds me of like The Deep from The Boys meets, uh, meets Aquaman in a female body. So it's cool, it's just interesting. I like this a lot. Um, this is another one that I think is really nice for the more like realistic or people that are maybe playing superhero games. Back in my like MMO days, like City of Heroes, that kind of custom type of uh, game. And definitely it's a very specific type of game. You know, they got some like interesting abeleths here, so it's not exclusive to but for like the Call of Cthulhu people that do want to have these more like modern minis, I think this is a really cool option. This is unique. I really like that. And I think this is this is why we do this kind of series is to kind of find these non-traditional, maybe outside of like the D&D or super sci-fi kind of feel. Water break. Drink of my vet. And here's our next roll. Okay. So we're on page 10, number eight. I don't think we've gotten a page 10. Five, six, seven, eight. Gear Guts Mech Shop. Off the bat, I'm a huge fan of orcs and orc related things. This is one of those nice kind of 40K orc inspired um, Patreons. I know orc is an army that gets a lot of love and I think is one of the more easily um, inspired by kind of proxies since there's so many people that have kit bashed and just throw stuff together since it's like that orc aesthetic. So, and these sculpts look great, honestly. Like these pirate orcs, really cool. I think they're a good fit for the 40K or just the more traditional like Sigmar 40K players, uh, orc players, sorry. They make the bits and everything so it can be compatible with like other armies. I like this too. It's like a gas mask. This is nice. This is pretty impressive to me that he's able to do so much of this. The in, the squig inspired creatures. This is cool, man. Um, I'm amazed that he's able to do so much of this. <laughs> Not gonna lie. This is a lot. Uh, like this mid June review, it just looks like an entire army that you could print out, which makes sense if orcs are his thing, right? But I'm I'm really impressed by this. Especially if it's just a one-man show. Wow. If you are an orc fan in pretty much any way, shape, or form, uh, you gotta check out Gear Guts. If you aren't already, checking them out. Let's see what our next one is. Okay. So it looks like 10 is our page, and 4 
is our number. Here we go, so we're at three, three, four. Hell Creator. So it looks like their limited uh, supporter slot is sold out. So $7, which is also a little lower than normal for their like monthly support, okay? June bundle. Okay, nice. I like this preview again, I know I mentioned this a lot. For the folks that like the more realistic, kind of large sculpt, um, this looks like a Hunger Games reference illusion with this big phoenix and this kind of Katniss style archer. Oh man, Korra. For those of you who know me, I'm, a, I'm an Avatar fan and I do love Korra. This is really nice, these busts. I know that there's a lot of people who kind of ask for more busts and I'm assuming this is like a Laura Croft inspired with a, a little more cleavage <laughs> than uh, she had in more modern games, but cool. Definitely unique in terms of um, what they're making. I don't think they're focusing as much for the uh, RPG gamers, unless you are one of those people who really likes to have very realistic proportions and you pretty much need a resin printer for those. But this seems like more for the painters if you want the big pinups, the stand-up sculptures, right? Pretty cool. Not gonna forget that name. All right, we're rolling. Okay, eight is our page and seven is our option. Five, six, seven. Epics and stuff miniatures. Oh man, you know, I'm not personally close with Lance, I do know a lot of people that are close with him and I've seen his Patreon all over the place because he has just such an immediately recognizable style. As soon as you see it, like I knew, I knew immediately this was Lance Wilkinson. <laughs> and like I said, I don't, I don't know him, right? But I see him post all the time and contribute to different comments on Facebook. So this is one of those people that has an extremely, like an immediately identifiable style, which I think is a good thing for a lot of people who are looking for very particular things in games, you know? If you don't stand for something, you don't stand for nothing. I don't necessarily always agree with that, but in this case, when there's a hundred plus Patreons making D&D &D stuff, or RPG, or Warhammer, I think sometimes it can be good to have your particular style and stick to what's true to you, what you like. And this is this Triceratops here, like it's not even his normal chunky style. So I think that there's some flexibility here in terms of what he's doing. Look, a cross promo with uh, Nova Minis. It looks like a cross promo with a bunch of people. So Tortles. It looks like, uh, I think he had a Tortle Kickstarter. I'm not sure if it's still running or if it has closed yet, but you see what I mean about these styles? Look at this. Like Ninja Turtle inspired Tortles. That's just, that's awesome. I love it. <laughs> a cross promo with Nova Minis. I think this is cool. I think it's cool that a lot of these smaller creators are doing this kind of um, cross promo. I think it'd be really great for the bigger Patreons who have a much wider audience of people who might have a little bit extra to spend and are looking for a little bit extra. I think it'd be great for them to participate in some of these cross promos too. So if any of you bigger Patreons are interested, you know, maybe reach out. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Lance, his big thing are like turtles and like chunky characters. I remember there was like a toilet roll uh, merchant that happened last year during the like the toilet paper shortage of COVID. Um, that's his style. So if you're into like some of the chunky style, like from the turtles and everything, maybe even like dinosaur stuff, this is a good option at least this month. All right, here we go. Okay, seven and seven. Six, seven, Tiger Skull RPG. Okay, I know Tiger Skull RPG too. I think anybody who's active in the community knows Tiger Skull RPG. And a big part of the reason why I've always known this Patreon in particular is because their branding is on point in my opinion. So even though they kind of have a less is more approach, their pledge levels are, are lower than normal. You know, one, five, eight and the things that they offer are really high quality and I think meant to be very usable for, for DMs. That's definitely who they focus on in my opinion. Like they have art that's super evocative, stat blocks, they have loot cards that go with it each month, several minis that you can use. So this is just 
really easy, I think, to just drop into your game. And again, this is one of those things where the renders are immediately recognizable. The detail is phenomenal. And I think when you choose uh, quality over quantity, you kind of have the flexibility to do this. So really nice in general, several poses. I love this one with the face open. That's really expressive in my opinion. Very cool. Uh, yeah, Alex does a great job. And I, I think I love his stuff. Really nice. So yeah, I, I think if you are one of those people that are okay with, you just want quality and a lot of stuff that isn't necessarily STLs, then this is a really good option. Uh, he's very active, posts a lot. And, you know, again, I've recognized a lot of his work immediately because it's just on point. Let's see our next one. And this is gonna be our last one because I wanna do 12 again like we did last episode. I think that's a lot. Maybe eventually we'll get through the 75 or so different uh, Patreons that are in this under 500 list. Cool. Let's see who our last Patreon is. <sighs> All right. I've been waiting for us to get one of the lower pages and we finally got it. So we're going to page two and we're gonna look at number three. One, two, three. Cert Studio. So I'm a little, I'm, I am a little confused here with uh, these levels because they're $1 per month level and then there's a $10 per month level, which gives like merchant, merchant level for 30 people. And there's nothing else here. So I'm not sure if you pay $1 and you get all the files or something like that. I might do another one after this. <laughs> um, okay, so it looks like he's taking a break right now and he's giving the people a merchant access to be able to rebuild and come back, which is respectable. I really respect when people can kind of manage that so that the people are given back to them. Um, can keep supporting them and come back when the artist is like recharged and ready to participate in the market. Okay, let's do one more. All right, so page eight, number six. Three, four, five, six. Schloss Bauer. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm actually a patron of, a patron of Schloss Bauer's. And I've always really liked his models. He shares, I'm not sure if he shares all of them or a lot of them for free on, on Patreon, but I know on Thingiverse, he's a big one. And he always does a mix of like inspired by popular properties like Metroid or Super Mario. And he makes them in like a miniature form. Then he also does like more traditional minis like this Warforged fighter, for example, which I think is really cool. Like I love the, like more dreadlock looks and he's got that like core in the middle. I think this would just be a really fun mini to paint and definitely a different approach to the Warforged. Man, look at this, like you see what I'm saying? A Lionel from Breath of the Wild. This is this is sick, man. I would love to, to run a Lionel in my D&D campaign. Honestly, I just drop it down on the players and let them, let them feel the same exact way I felt when I first fought Lionel in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I got wrecked. So here's another one, like a Root Blight. I think this is just a nice approach. Different than a lot of the traditional root blights. I mean, it, it could almost be like a worm or carry-on creature of some sort. Slugula, <laughs> I like this. Mold blight with the backer only version. You see, manhandler, he just got a great style and it's super unique and immediately identifiable. Uh, Dodongo boss, you know. There's a reason I'm subscribed to him as a patron. In addition to the fact that he gives so many of them back to the community for free. Um, if you're into like this style of stuff that I'm just kind of sharing, just check him out. He's great. He's really good and a great person to subscribe to, or at least check out his Thingiverse and tip him if you can. Okay. Part two. Okay. I really enjoy doing this because I think our community is amazing and I love seeing it grow. And I think we need sculptors and companies of all sizes in addition to the big ones. And if you agree, go ahead and like the video so we can get a little more eyes for the little folks. If there's a Patreon that you think is a hidden gem, go ahead and leave a comment so we can know. I'd love to check them out. If you enjoy the content we make and want to support the channel, the best way to do so is to pick up a late pledge on our website, lostventures.co. And actually, if you are interested, we're giving away some free models and content for our next Kickstarter, a brand new expansion for the Lost Adventures. And you can get those freebies by joining our waiting list at lostventures.co slash coming soon. 
Thanks again for watching, everyone. Happy printing and happy gaming.